<laughs> well, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Thanksgiving. And I just want to take a moment to welcome you all to uh, another Discipleship Empowerment Word. But before we get to that, I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving from our household to your household. Amen. God bless you as some of you will have the day off and some of you will eat a lot of food. But I need to do something else. For those of us on this side of the world, we know it's Thanksgiving. Now, for those of you, I just seen Ong Lot who has just come on. Uh, we have Thanksgiving over here early, over in Myanmar and Asia Rim and that. They have their Thanksgiving over in November. And their Thanksgiving is a little bit different than our Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving for the, the, the new rice that has come in and all the crops that have come in. But over here, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's part of our kicking off the fall. Uh, just for again, for those of you who are in uh, Asia, we have this thing called fall that starts sometime in September, around September 20, 21st. And the leaves on our trees often turn colors. Some, sometimes you'll see them turn red and yellow and various colors. And then usually by the middle of October, the end of October, a lot of these types of trees have lost their leaves. And they're getting ready for what we call winter, which a lot of you don't experience. I know you get colder weather over there, but here we get really cold weather, down to minus 30 to minus oh, 40, sometimes even with wind chill factor, minus 50. And it's amazing. We can actually drive on our water when it's so frozen. So this is the beginning of the fall. <clears throat> and this is a time when a lot of our farmers have now brought in their crops and have put them in the barns. And uh, like you, we want to celebrate our first uh, intake of the the new harvest and so that has been going on for the last number of weeks since september the harvesting of various uh, crops now just a little bit different than some of you uh, when it comes to food on this side of the world we have this wonderful thing called turkey <laughs> it's probably about the same size as a goose right or a uh, yeah. You know, uh, just trying to think of what in Asia, what it's a big bird, okay, and it can weigh anywhere from, well, five to 35, 40 pounds, and we uh, kill it and clean it and put it into our ovens, and we have this thing called an oven, it's an electric thing where you put the, the, the uh, meat in a pan and baste it and everything, put it in the oven, and let it sit in there for four or five hours. Sometimes we stuff it with things and uh, then you have that. Then you can have potatoes and then you can have this whole area of squashes and various times of pumpkin and uh, all. We can even have a ham, all kinds of different things. I mean, there's there's kind of the traditional and then there's everything that goes off, off after that. And so... Uh, and then uh, sometimes towards the end, we have this thing called pumpkin pie or other pies. But it, the pumpkin pie is kind of traditional. It's a pie. It looks almost the same color as my shirt. It's a little bit orange and it's made from a pumpkin. Now, again, uh, those of you in Asia that are listening right now, our pumpkins are different than your pumpkins. Uh, sometimes our pumpkins and our squashes are two different names. And so uh, a lot of the things that you eat over there, we would probably call more squash than pumpkin, even though you call it pumpkin, okay? But uh, then we grind it all up and we cook it and then we make it into a pumpkin pie. And then we have this terribly rich stuff called uh, whipped cream that we put on top. It's made from milk and that and uh that's kind of how it goes for our day of celebration and usually depending on the home people will gather around different family members now with covid uh, everything is upside down this year but uh we're going to hopefully get together with some family members have something to eat uh share a little bit what we're thankful for for the entire year that has gone by so 
again, uh, nice thing about Colwyn and I, we get to have our Canadian Thanksgiving in October. And if we want to, we can turn around and have our, our Asian Thanksgiving in November. So we can have two of them. <laughs> so that's just uh, something I wanted to share with all of you who are on this side of the world in Canada. Uh, that our brothers and sisters on the other side of the world may not be celebrating Thanksgiving today. They're, they have thankful hearts. They're thankful for what God is doing. But they also uh, will celebrate theirs in November. And I like it when they have Thanksgiving because they bring into the church all their first fruits, as you recall, the first rice, the first of everything that they have harvested. They bring it in and put it in a lot of times in these big wicker uh, bamboo type baskets and uh, a lot of times even chickens will be in there so in the front of the church you will have all these baskets with all kinds of foods in it and even a, a live chicken <laughs> in the top of the basket and uh, afterwards they will give them out to the both the pastors and other people in the in the community the needy and uh, usually the whole front of the church is full of these baskets and with chickens quacking in them while you're doing worship and praise and while you're preaching, uh, they're carrying on like, uh, you know, what's going on. And then at the end of the service, again, the Thanksgiving prayer and these baskets will be distributed to people. So it's a, I miss all the celebration and uh, lot. I'm glad that you're watching today, Pastor Onlock is from uh, right up by our home, just lives down the street uh, from where we are. He's working on his uh, doctorate and uh, doing schooling, and uh, we just keep you in prayer. Also, he's heavily involved in the church there, and his family, uh, his wife has been teaching English and that, but I, I know a lot of things have changed because of lockdown. We need to pray for the, 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 for the catching people because there's been a lot of sick and people who have passed away. But today is a day of Thanksgiving. And so I just wanted to share all that just because some of you on this side might be wondering, what am I talking about? And on the other side, they might be wondering what I'm talking about. But one thing that we all need to be, whether it's today or any day through the week, we need to be thankful and to give thanks unto our Lord Jesus Christ for saving us and redeeming us and washing us with his precious blood and showing mercy and grace to us. Amen. And I just thank God for that. Um, he, Ong Lot was just texting me here. He says, I think we do not have any Thanksgiving Day here this time, but thanks for the wonderful message from you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they won't be having it at, at this time, but maybe if they'll be able to get together down the road yet, I think it's in November, right, Cohen? And uh, the, the Thanksgiving there, but they a lot of the churches have been locked down for over a year. They could not gather together, but we need to continue to pray. Bless you, Anglot, and your family and your children. We love you and we miss you. Anyway, let's move on as we are now studying and continuing to study our whole area of holy Holy Spirit and Spirit, as we've talked about, holy is separated, anointed uh, for the purpose of service, uh, something that has been set aside by God and anointed by God to be able to be used by God as a vessel for his glory. Amen. And we need to be, if there's anything to be, I was thinking about, I don't know how we could have a, a title today, but maybe it should just be Holy Thanksgiving giving holy thanksgiving to the Lord for what the Lord, who is holy, has done for us. Amen. And so we're just grateful that as we look into these scriptures and travel along in this journey, today we're going to pick up a couple of scriptures in Jude. And uh, they're not necessarily directly uh, tied to the word thanksgiving, but I, I think Jude, when he was concerned and he wrote this letter, He's writing a letter to the believers, to the bond servants of Jesus Christ. He tells who he is and and how he is serving the Lord. And one of the things that he is concerned about is the apostasy of the church. And I and his his book is only one chapter. It is twenty five verses. That's the letter. 
and the, but the letter is very powerful and he's really concerned about what is going on in the new birth of the church how the church is going forth by this time it might have been 20 or so years old maybe not quite that long yet and uh, he is beginning to proclaim about what is needed and i like what he says at the very beginning and 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 the reason i i like to tie sanctification to the idea of holiness because sanctification is a process of becoming clean and washed and holiness is as is to be set aside and set apart for god to be holy under the lord the scripture says you know be ye holy as i am holy says the lord and so but and to walk in holiness, we also need to walk in sanctification. And notice what he says, To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. So those of you are sanctified, those who are, are, are being cleaned and washed, anointed, separated by God, you know, we need to give thanks for what God, you know, he's praising God. He says, To those who are called, sanctified by God and preserved in Jesus Christ. Verse 2, mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you. And I pray that, that on our Thanksgiving celebration, that we would take time to be thankful to our Lord Jesus Christ of his mercy, of his peace, and of his love. And it's interesting that Jude is praying that it would be multiplied out. It's just that you wouldn't have a little bit. See, Thanksgiving is often a time of, of celebrating the bounty of what we have received. Uh, for those of you on this side of the world, we and, and, and again, those of you on the other side of the world, uh, we grow this thing called tomato plant. Okay, it's a tomato. And this year, Colwyn went and bought one tomato, well, two but one, it is called Big Boy, right? Better boy. Better boy tomato plant. Well, this tomato plant has gone berserk. That's all I can say. You know, we have one tomato plant, okay, that has gives us tomatoes about this big around, okay? And so far, I think it has given to us over 50 tomatoes. Okay, 50 from one plant. And it's still growing, and it's still producing more tomatoes she's probably got another 20 more out there and it's not only growing out of the we only have a small flower bed it is now growing down in the parking lot uh, where we park our cars well this thing is as i say i think has gone berserk but it has given us a bountifulness of tomatoes and boy we're thankful for them because they're really delicious but I think we need to also tie this in a little bit, that the bounty of God, we can give thanks to God for his, uh, his bounty, his love, his grace and mercy as he sanctifies us and makes us as a, a pure vessel for his glory. Amen. Now, I know it doesn't use the word thanks or thankful here, but I think that Jude is just trying to remind the, the church of what God is doing and what God continues to do through Jesus Christ. That's why it says, to those who are called. So not only are you called, but you're called and sanctified. How or through whom? Through God the Father and preserved. So not only is sanctified, but the preserving power of God working through Jesus Christ is able to keep you. He is able to carry you through. And sometimes in Thanksgiving, we, we, we also sit back and, and I know sometimes we do this in our house. What are some of the things that you're thankful for for the last year? And that you could go back and look at the last year and say, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for health. I'm thankful for his provisions, whatever it may be. And Jude is looking back and saying, I give thanks to my father. Uh, God, who is sanctifying me, I give thanks to Jesus Christ, who is preserving me or keeping me. And how is all this happening? He's doing it through the mercy and peace and love, which he continues to multiply out to us. That's the amazing part of our God. 
I've been a Christian now for over 50 years, and I must have to, and I, I can admit, I don't have to admit, I will admit that God's mercy and his peace and his love has been continued to multiply in my life year after year, day after day, hour after hour, and I want to give thanks to the Lord for that today. Because if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I probably wouldn't even be here. And if it wasn't for Jesus Christ preserving me and keeping me, I probably wouldn't be involved in the ministry that I've been involved in. So I thank God for how he shows his mercy. His mercy that we do not deserve. How he shows his love, his great love by sending his son. And out of that love, God uses that love to preserve us, to keep us in his hand, and then to give us peace that passes all understanding. He goes on, beloved. See, I, like he is thankful. Beloved, while I was with diligent to write you concerning our common salvation. He's saying what we have. And the reason why I'm writing you is because we're believers in Jesus Christ. We have a common salvation. We have believed in Jesus Christ. Jesus has received us, has filled us, has blessed us, has preserved us, has kept us. And he goes on, I found it necessary to write you and exhort you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for, for all delivered to the saints. So he's saying, you know, I found it urgent that I need to write you just as I know that we have a common salvation and thank God for that. We've been made brothers and sisters in the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ and we thank God for that. That's the salvation of Jesus Christ has shown us mercy, peace and love and that Jesus himself has, has preserved us and it's all because of faith and it's faith that has been delivered to us. It has been brought to us. And that whole idea, again, going back to our brothers and sisters over in Myanmar, is how a lot of times, you know, that as they gather up all those baskets and everything, and if you couldn't be there or you were somewhere else that particular day of Thanksgiving, they would deliver it to you. And sometimes we would get two or three or more baskets full of rice and vegetables and eggs and, 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 uh, chickens and sometimes even a duck and all kinds of things and I, I you know this made me think about that this morning as we look at thanksgiving i'm not trying to read a lot into it but what i'm trying to read into it what was what jude i think is coming and beginning to write the believers about how he was thankful for the sanctification of god the father and how jesus christ was preserved in him and he was trying to say, hey, we need to also be thankful that because of his mercy, grace, and love, that we have this common salvation through Jesus Christ. And that we need to be earnestly hanging on to the faith that was delivered to us. Amen? We need to hold on to the faith that has been delivered to us. Well, we haven't got to our two scriptures yet that are here that use the word spirit and holy and Holy Spirit. Uh, we are going to look at verses 19 and 20. Remember, Jude only has one chapter, so we just say 19, and then we say 20. Well, 19, as, he, as you were to go through from this verse 5 on, he is really concerned about the apostate that is taking place, and how the apostate is deceiving people, and and bringing them into a place where they're depraved. And, and people need to realize that if they don't be careful, that they are doomed to destruction. And then he goes on, and he also talks about the apostate that he predicts is going to come upon the variety of people and, and the church itself, and that they need to be careful. And he lists about, you know, some of the grumbling and complaining and walking according to their own lust, that their mouth with great swelling words, flattering people, to gain an advantage. But he's saying, watch out. Watch out for these kinds of people. He goes on in verse 19, and this is where he says, they are sensuous persons. And that whole idea, they're going after the lust of their own flesh. 
not only in the physical way with other people, but also in materialistic ways with things that they are going after. And it's causing, who caused division, not having the spirit, the two spirit, the two breath of God. You know, that's why we need to be discerning and say, oh God, lead us in the truth of your word. Lead us in the place that we have the breath of the Holy Spirit working in us. If there's an area that I, I sometimes have to just remember is to be thankful for, to be thankful for that Jesus sent forth the Holy Spirit to fill us, to empower us. And, and we need to be thankful for that because the Spirit is what gives us truth. The Spirit is what gives us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It's the Spirit of God who breathes upon us so that we can take that which He has given to us and give it to others. Oh, we need to be thankful for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need to be thankful for what the Father has done. What has the Father done? He sent the Son. We need to be thankful that the Father sent the Son because what has the Son done? He has given us redemption through the shed blood and the resurrection power and that he is there earnestly uh, preserving us as we journey here on the earth. And we need to be thankful for the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, wouldn't it be interesting that if we could sit around our Thanksgiving today table today and say, Hey, let's talk about the work of the Father. How can we thank God for what the Father has done? How can we be thankful for the abundance of what Christ has done? And how can we be thankful for how he's preserved us? Those of us who are older, you can say how he's preserved you, how he's come into your life and and and, and caused you to have an experience with a full salvation of Christ Jesus how he has preserved you and kept you and how he has continued to show you mercy and peace and love. Isn't it amazing? There's lots to be thankful for here. And then not only to be that, but to be thankful for how the Holy Spirit, you know, is there in our lives. Because he says when the apostasy begins to rise up, one of the noticeable things that are going to be missing, that will be missing in these people's lives is the Holy Spirit. They will be in denial of the Holy Spirit. They will deny Jesus Christ. You can read down through these 35 verses and see how they are going to deny Jesus Christ, how they desire their own flesh and their own will, and that it will either even be leaders in the church that will be like this, and, and shepherds and people that need to come to a realization that they have walked away from the blessing, from the mercy, peace, and love of Jesus Christ. They have walked away from the preserving power of Jesus Christ and have are not walking in the presence of the Spirit of God. So then, after he gives us all this, you could say, negativity of what's going on. So he's not only telling you what's happening in the church right then, but he's also going to prophesy what's going to happen in the church yet to come. And we could go through and check off if we were to list all the things that what this apostasy is all going to be like. You could check it all off. And you could say, yeah, we see this. But then he switches and uses the word but, our favorite word here, because he's going to give a comparison. That's the way it is. That's the way it's happening in the world. And the people who read this letter would say, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. But you need to give thanks for what I'm going to tell you. And he goes on and tells them this. But you, beloved, think about that. Is there something to be thankful for there that you're part of the beloved? Ang Lot, as you're listening, you're part of the beloved. We pray for you, we love you, and we miss you. Others that are watching from Nagaland, others that are watching from Nepal. I see a brother here from Nepal. We love you. We love you and we're praying that the peace and mercy of God will continue to preserve you as you're going forward. For those in Canada, you know, your beloved, Sheila, you know, Norman Louise, you're part of the beloved. You're part of the beloved. Our cousin Alice. 
You're part of the beloved. I mean, there's so many that that show up on the screen. You're part. And that today should be a day, a day of thanksgiving where we just shout out and say, hey, I'm part of the beloved. I am, you know, Colwyn and I get to be blessed to be part of the beloved brothers and sisters, the saints of Jesus Christ in many countries around the world. And I thank God for you. I thank God for what you're doing around the world, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, sharing forth his mercy, grace, and love, and peace. I thank God for all of you, and you are part of the beloved. And that's what Jude is saying. Yeah? He's saying, you know, watch out for all this. But he says, one thing I want to give thanks for, you're part of the beloved. I thank God for each one of you, because you're part of the beloved. He goes on. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith. You know, he's talking about here that our journey, our journey of sanctification that he starts off with here is a journey of holy faith. And holy faith, I also believe, is partly connected to this whole idea of holy thanksgiving. You know, that we come to the place and we give thanks for the faith that is in us. It's a holy faith. Why is it holy? Because it's been given to us by Jesus Christ. By faith, we have received Jesus Christ. By faith, we are, 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 are being taken on a journey of sanctification. By faith, we are becoming made holy in the presence of our God. Think about that. You know, if there's something that you, you know, not only could you give thanks today for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but to give thanks for the work that has been done on, to give thanks that you've been able to walk into the Holy of Holies, into the very place of God's presence, into the very mercy seat of God, where the blood of Christ was sprinkled on there, and that you can come in to, and have that holy faith. The faith that the Son, well, let's put it this way. The faith that the Father had by sending His Son. The faith that the Son has by sending the Holy Spirit. The faith that the triune God has by sending us to go out and to give forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think about that. I, I daily, you know, I know some of you know me well enough that sometimes we like to grumble and complain and all those kinds of things. And I have a little bit of that in my heart once in a while. You know, I get up on the wrong side of the bed or whatever it may be. But I try through the day just to get to the place each day of saying, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your love. Thank you that you've allowed me to walk into the Holy of Holies. Thank you that you've allowed me to be grafted into the vine. Thank you, Lord, that you have allowed your faith to build up in me. So that I can go out and not only uh, proclaim you, but also to serve you. And so it's interesting. And he talks about this holy faith. And then he adds something very unique right on the end of this. He says that the holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. I think, you know, something that to be thankful for above and beyond is that we're grafted into the vine. We're part of the vine. And the life that comes out through the vine is the Holy Spirit. To be thankful that we can pray in the Holy Spirit. We can pray in the presence of God. I know we like to divide body, soul, and spirit all up, and we like to divide Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But to remember, it's one triune God who comes to us in various aspects so we can understand and learn. But here we can pray through the Holy Spirit who allows us, who empowers us so that we can pray to Jesus Christ who's doing what? Interceding on our behalf. Well, isn't that something to be thankful for? That God Almighty himself makes it an opportunity that we can pray into the, with the Spirit and pray in such a way that it is communicated to the Son who then mediates on our behalf before the Father. Wow! 
Isn't that something to be thankful for? I would think so. And he goes on that you can pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of your Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You know, keep in. Remember he started off by saying in the mercies and peace and love of God. Well, today, I think we should have over in our part of the world a great time of giving thanks to the Lord for his mercy, for his love, for his grace, for his peace. To give thanks that we can enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. I know the focus may be today eating, eating, and eating, <laughs> and eating a lot of great food. But maybe another part of focus today is to give thanks to the Father for sending his Son, giving thanks to the Son for sending forth the Holy Spirit, giving thanks to the Holy Spirit that he not only seals us, but fills us so that when we pray, we're connected, connected, completely connected to the triumph God. Now there is something to give thanks for. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what we can come together and learn from you today. And Lord, I pray that in our time of thanksgiving over here in Canada and various countries around the world, that we would be more thankful than just the harvest, more thankful than just the food that we may eat today, but that we will come into a place this day of thanking you, Father, for not giving up on us, for thanking you, Father, that you loved us so much that you sent your Son and to be with us, to be in flesh, to walk amongst us. And I thank you, Jesus, as our Christ, as our Messiah, our anointed one, I thank you for what you have done here on earth and have opened up the way of salvation for us. I thank you that we can enter into the Holy of Holies. I thank you also that you have sent the Holy Spirit to empower us, to fill us, to bring us together in unity and harmony. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, that your spirit will continue to move in our lives. But I know, Lord, that for the power of the Spirit to move, we need to give thanks. Thank you for the sanctification. Thank you for the washing of the, your, of the blood of Christ in our lives. And thank you, most of all, for the love that you continue to extend to us and the mercy that you show to us, Jesus, and that through it all, we can have eternal life. Oh, God, I want to thank you today more than anything else, that I can have eternal life in you and that I can know that I know that I know that if I was to die today, that I would spend eternity with you. And I thank you for that wonderful gift. So Father, make, let this be a day where we just spend some time thanking you for all that you have done. Oh God, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve your mercy. We don't deserve that peace that passes all understanding. We don't deserve all that love and grace that you show for us. But Lord, we are thankful that you did and you have and you continue to do even to this day. And we give you praise now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. Let's give a holy thanksgiving unto the Lord. Amen. We love you. Have a great day. And again, for those of you on the other side of the world, you can still have Thanksgiving to the Lord today too. But also when you come into November and you have your Thanksgiving, maybe this is a message that you can remember that we also as saints and brothers and sisters in the Lord need to give thanks for one another, but also thanks for what Jesus, what the Father and what the Holy Spirit desires to do in our lives each day. Amen. Love you. Keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye for now.